BBC Radio Scotland. Hello, I'm Tim Minchin. This is a download from the BBC. For terms and conditions, please go to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio Scotland. Well, hello and welcome to Scotland's Funny Bits. I'm Lauren Mackay. Coming up in this episode, comedian Stuart Lee. Probably because I've sold so badly in Perth. They've told you not to even bother going there. <laughs> Author Christopher Brookmeyer. I got the Protestant work ethic and the Catholic guilt complex. Right. <laughs> and between the two of them, I have to be busy all the time. <laughs> and have you ever wondered what a young Fred would sound like drunk? Hmm, this one is for you. I'll be with you for history, but I'm just taking double maths off. <laughs> oh, well, I'll catch up later. But first, remember back in the day when you were ill as a kid? What cheered you up? Fred and co-host Amy took a trip down memory lane on Monday. The thing that I remember most, uh, and maybe a lot of people will as well, or that they've given their children, is the horrible medicine that was in antibiotic form. Yeah. It tasted like, well, it was supposed to be banana flavoured. Yeah. And it did not taste like bananas. It I was, used to scream. It was yellow and that was it, yes, wasn't it? and I used to scream having to take that. I just hated it. But the thing that I remember most about being unwell is that my mum would kind of let me get away with things and I could kind of ask for what I wanted. Uh-huh. So I used to ask for... Um, a packet of frazzles on a morning roll for my breakfast. Other crisps are available. Frazzle. But it was bacon <laughs> frazzles that I always... And we used to watch Supermarket Sweep. And that is my memory of There female. you are. What a perfect Supermarket morning. Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> hey, whatever happened to Dale Winton? <laughs> Where is he now? Do That'd you be do a double whammy sometimes? if you were watching Supermarket Sweep and you saw frazzles on the shelf. <laughs> that would be you so would good. Thought- <laughs> Meanwhile, whilst giving out the answer to the anagram, Fred showed he's getting older every day. Malky Campbell's got in touch to say, Fred, was it not Bonnie Langford that the anagram? What did I say? Bonnie, Bonnie Tyler. Tyler. I meant Langford. Oh, okay. oh you're so right. Langford. There who, you go. who said that? That was Malky Campbell, but he always gets it right, so I don't think no, it was him. It wasn't that, Bonnie that, Langford. Yes. So I don't know if you why I said still... Tyler. <laughs> yeah. She just passed away, didn't she, recently? Bonnie Tyler? Um... Did she not? Don't think so, did you? Who am I thinking? Well, Lindsay DePaul did. Oh, yeah. God, I think I'm sounding like an old man, okay. haven't I? Uh, yeah, ah, so he's numbers. Dead, did you know? <laughs> hey. Aye. Ray Milland. He was in that black and white film. I think Ford and Greg just listened to me and they said, write that down. That sounds like what an old git would say. What's that, Victor? Bonnie Langford. Aye, she's dead. The Welsh lassie. No, that was Bonnie Tyler. She did. No, you're thinking of Lindsay DePaul. Oh, so I am. Oh, at least our Fred hasn't completely lost control of his bodily functions. Oh, wait. Uh, I should warn your listeners, I I think I've got a a belch kind of bubbling up in my stomach. I I don't know if it's going to happen between now and ten. If it does, I do (laughs) apologise. I'll try and save it till when the news is on. Maybe it was something in Fred's childhood that made him think it's acceptable to belch in public. Because somebody in the family worked at John Duranson, the whiskey bottlers, Uh we used to get our hands on malt, Uh which was an extract, a barley malt, and we used to get a spoonful of that, which was meant to give us good health. But they still, people still say that a a drop of whiskey and, you know, well, maybe not. I was not alcoholic, I would say. Oh, right, okay. (laughs) Imagine sending a 13 year old off to school. (laughs) I've been had that. You okay? Listen, miss, I'll be with you for history, but I'm just taking double maths off. <laughs> oh, well, I'll catch up with it. Macaulay and Cole played host to some more top guests this week, including writer Christopher Brookmeyer on Tuesday. I, I like to just be writing the next uh-huh. novel. I'm only really happy with my work. I always think it's a cross between... Uh, and the the because of of my parents marrying across the perceived religious divide in the sixties, it meant I got the Protestant work ethic and the Catholic guilt complex. Right. And <laughs> between the two of them, I have to be busy all the time. Also making an appearance was the brilliant comedian Stuart Lee. You're in Perth, and it's March. Yes, yeah. and uh, I've got a gig. Um, and, and at the end of March, and I thought, oh, it'd be good. I'll tie on a date for for Perth as well. So I phoned up the concert hall and I said, uh, "Look, I've got a gig on the twenty eighth of March. Are you, you know, have you got anything twenty seventh or twenty sixth?" And they, <laughs> they said, "Hang on, no, th- no, no. Well, it's free, but there's an awful lot of comedy uh, in March." <laughs> They don't want so, any more. They don't want any more. So yeah. in Perth, my old, I, I still, I'm a Perthshire boy. Right. 
but I just thought that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, there's uh, a glass ceiling on left. I think I think we've had enough. <laughs> and I was going to say, look, there might not be that much laughter, right? But well, just uh, no, no, that's enough. Maybe think about but, October, Fred. You know what I like about that is it's that um, it's that uh, comedy's sort of all the same. And yes. Again, we never say this about music, and we often think it's just funny. Like uh-huh. uh, someone goes, oh, "I like music," and do you know what? I went to see uh, Extreme Noise Terror, and it was just it was just <laughs> things banging, and you kind of think it's like there's all sorts, That's and right. the assumption that you've topped it up, and therefore uh-huh. the town has had its kind of fill of it is really funny. But you know, I know I'm doing selling badly in Perth, so they may be right. It's probably because I've sold so badly in Perth, they've told you not to even bother <laughs> going there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Stuart, we're later on this morning going to be talking about uh, hearing aids. We've got a, a hearing specialist coming in to talk to us because we learned that Billy Connolly. Uh, has taken to wearing hearing aids or when he's on stage. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, th- yeah. Th- is this a new thing? Well, um, I found out um, uh, about uh, a year and a half ago that oh. I'd been going um, really deaf for about a quarter of a century, uh, and um, so I started. I've started wearing hearing aids on stage last summer, and um, it's good fun actually because uh, you, you kind of I hear rumours really differently. Right, um, and so that changes things. It's 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 um, in lieu of developing or changing your style or having any new ideas, I find that <laughs> changing the way that you hear a room has been a, a shortcut. To that. But yeah, it's good. I mean, you can take them out if you're fed uh-huh. up with an audience. Right. Show them you're not interested. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, it's good. I mean, I I also think uh, that you know, I think look, I partly developed this sort of character on stage who's not interested in the audience and sa- says they don't get his jokes and he's going to uh-huh. do his own thing irrespective of whether they like it or not. And no, I'm not entirely uh, unconvinced. And that wasn't just that I couldn't really hear the laughs. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good. it's good because any any kind of um, uh, you know problem like that, uh, people. I mean, I mean, my wife Bridget broke her hand and her and her foot um, this week, and then um, went on stage with crutches at the oh, weekend. Of course, oh, people man. love an injured comedian, uh-huh. don't they? It's sure all right. They think any pain or suffering, uh-huh. or if you've got hearing aids or anything, you know, a then, broken um, hand and a broken foot. I know, yeah. I mean, it's great that people really? people think, oh, isn't it brilliant that they've uh-huh. what come a trooper. Out, you know. Still going on with with a crutch. I know, yeah. Mm. And then with me, look at that poor old fat grey deaf man <laughs> struggling on in the face of. Uh, of it. But yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I feel like sort of Superman. I mean, at the stand last summer, uh-huh. that was the first time I started wearing them in the stand, which is a sort of cellar uh, venue in yeah. um, in Edinburgh. And I, I could, I kept thinking, what's that noise? And I realised I could hear like the guys in the trams over the road sort of shouting <laughs> and stuff like that. And I, I thought it was people heckling me at the back about right. um, you know waiting at the junction or thing. But it was it was people so crossing weird. the road. Yeah, yeah, and it's really exciting. I mean, you can pick up like individual little bits of conversation, and uh, so I must yeah, get it's some. Great. Yeah, I mean, I mean could, get some, but what it yeah. means is in Perth and Inverness, I'll be able to hear the vast emptiness of the rooms <laughs> as, the, as, the, as the words echo around the chapel, <laughs> the wind blowing in. Yeah, yeah uh, but, my, yeah, my worry would be I'd put them in and I could still not hear the audience laughter. <laughs> well, you know, there is that, yeah. that danger, it was a yeah. relief. You know. There are some topics Stu might be a bit wary of talking about on stage. I, I assumed that um, Scotland would go independent, like lots of people, mm-hmm. and I kind of thought that would be interesting because as a as a comic, it would at least force you to confront the fact that there were different political systems in different places, as it is this kind of very close um, uh, result. That is actually difficult in a way, because you know half the people you're playing to wanted to leave. <laughs> 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 so um, we just didn't quite get that extra little percentage. And so, yeah. you know, it's difficult to know how to pitch things. It's an interesting time. Well, I had a, a burn supper to work at the other night, to Stuart, and uh, I said, what percentage of the audience here are Scottish? And they, uh, that good team, what percentage are English? And that was slightly larger. And I said, oh, it's 45-55, or as we call it in Scotland, a draw. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, well, you can probably say that. I'd get uh-huh. booed for that, I think. That's the difference, you know, as well. <laughs> so there's nothing interesting about travelling around. I, don't, I can't remember a time in 25 years of doing stand-up when different parts of the country have been so different. I mean, uh, in England, for example, mm-hmm. I got a, a new half hour on um, on UKIP, which obviously is um, important to people in England. In a way, it probably isn't in in Scotland, you know. So I mean, not, not, that's not to say it wouldn't be funny there, yeah. but it not it doesn't touch you in the same way. And the, uh, the you know the, the political differences and social Correct. differences in the country are becoming so vast, it's quite hard mm-hmm. to write a sort of one size fits all act, you know. Well, I mean, I, half an hour down in the southeast, I, I would trim that back to maybe a couple of one-liners for Scotland, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the brilliant Stuart Lee there. Let's move on now to the biggest stories of the week, as reviewed by comedians Helen Zaltzman and Teddy. I know. 
heavens to Betsy if it's not 20 to 12 <laughs> already and it's time to have a look at the big five stories of the week and we have got Helen Zaltzman with us. Good morning, Ms Zaltzman. Good morning, Mr McCauley. How are we? Well, lovely and formal we're being today. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and uh, instead of Nish Kumar, we have phoned up Teddy and said, Teddy, can you help us out? And Teddy said... I said, I don't know if I can help you out, but, you know, I am here now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is the very answer we were looking for. Teddy, thank you very much for being with us. No problem. And, and do you know what we've gone and done? What have you done? We've gone and thrown the very first uh, big story at you, but before that, we have a quote from the week. Would either, nay, both of you have a listen to this and tell me who you think said it? We only have one life, so why should the authorities be in charge of what we want to be known as? There you are. Who said this? Only one life. Why should the authorities be in charge of what we want to be known as? Who might have said that? Prince Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's... Uh, yeah, move on. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Prince Andrew. Was it a stroppy teenager? No, he was 26 years old. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing badly at this. It comes Come on, from Teddy. Scandinavia. Uh, um, was it somebody who wanted to have their own death metal band, but the name was too horrific to be allowed on the radio? No, <laughs> it, oh. you're close to it. Somebody who wanted to change the name, and his name was Benjamin Priestler Herbst from Denmark. That I'm, I like the confidence that you said that with, because that sounds like that could be the right pronunciation. But <laughs> I assume you have no idea either. Any, anything that you think is going to be um, you know, doubted pronunciation-wise, <laughs> you say it swiftly with confidence. <laughs> That's good advice. But Benjamin, he didn't have the confidence to say it correctly, so he wanted to change it to superhero. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that, Denmark? Well, the, they said, we don't believe that superhero lives up to the criteria for being approved as a boy's name. Well, that's very disappointing. Isn't it? Yeah. Denmark has approved the following names, though, in the last few years. Balcony, <laughs> which I think was one of Michael Jackson's kids. <laughs> Gin. <laughs> as Hello. in Gin. And Gandalf. <laughs> of course. Because superhero know, versus... Maybe they only like the ones that are kind of beardy rather than wearing spandex. Superhero <laughs> versus Gin sounds like some sort of really dark superhero movie in which he's battling inner demons. <laughs> <laughs> Just a dark room, the guy's sitting morose. <laughs> it was that story the other day about those parents that had to change their daughter's name from Nutella to yeah. a name of a human being rather than a spread. That's right, that was in France, wasn't it? They love Nutella on the continent. They really yeah. love it's it. A shame. I mean, people like Nutella. It's a name that would uh -huh. that would get a lot of credit initially. It's, it's quite a jolly name. It yeah. is. Uh, <laughs> in Scotland, we have Raspberry Preserve. She's doing well <laughs> at school. That's classy, isn't it? Now we better move on to the big stories of the week. And Teddy, as I say, we've gone and given you the very first one. Here's the headline. <laughs> You rode a fortune. Ah, this is an easy one. It's a story that I'm sure they're going to cover on the big debate at 12 o'clock, but let's nail it ourselves first. Yes, so this is the, uh, in Greece's general election, the far-left Syriza party. Uh, they came out of it as the largest party on Sunday, but they still needed support to form a coalition. Mm -hmm. So you now have the situation where a far-left party has formed a coalition with a right-wing party, the Kaboom. Greek independents. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how you have... How they have a meeting and work at what you know what they're going to eat at the meeting. I, I don't know what you have like <laughs> dolphin unfriendly tuna, but with some organic humus. <laughs> is that the sort of compromise they have to go to? Yeah, it is. It's Greece. the The general election was won by the anti austerity party, uh, and uh, who knows what lies ahead? They're, they're, they're kind of saying, "Well, look, we know we owe you 179 billion, but we're, we might still pay it." Okay, so don't chuck us out. Next headline, Ms. Zaltzman. Knickknacks made by Mac give the world a phone. No. <laughs> Musical. Um, well, you hinted at this um, in did. the last item, Fred, because More uh, than hinted. this is about Apple being the most lucrative uh, company in the world. They mm -hmm. they reported a net profit of 11.8 billion quid in the last <gasps> quarter. We've all been there, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, and. You see loads of articles going, oh, Apple's tanking, oh, Apple's not doing well in China. Oh, hang on, Apple is the biggest phone provider in China. Apple is the most lucrative company in the world. So you just think, can journalists stop uh, stop, stop doing reports? Talk about something else <laughs> that is uh, actually based in, uh, in truth? No. Um, but um, that's a lot of money. How long would it take them to just 
buy Greece outright. A <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> Greece would be a, a great market, though, like for Absolutely. iPads. Absolutely, yes. Because if, if you everything the begins iPad, with I there anyway. B, there's that, and then there's also if you're sitting like with an iPad and you're looking at Twitter and you see a picture of someone's dinner, then once you've finished looking at that, you have to smash the iPad just for the tradition's sake. <laughs> so that's going to be a great market. If well, they are able to replicate this uh, 12 billion approximately pounds profit in the the first quarter, they would be able to pay off Greece's debt of 179 billion euros in just, uh, at the current rates, three years. Three years. Just what three an amazing years. bit of PR that would be as well. Uh-huh. Why, why didn't Greece uh, stop producing iPads uh-huh. rather than whatever else they've been doing for the you last couple of thousand years? When you're travelling through the countryside and you, you come to a city and it, it's called, I don't know, Shrapsmere, Twinned with bad garsten mm. in Germany. Why doesn't he just, when you arrive in Greece, it just says twinned with apple? <laughs> well, it's bound to declare itself an independent state eventually, isn't it? There you are. Greece and apple, the perfect mix. Aww. It's so weird now, like looking back, there was a brief period of my life where I thought that sitting in a Starbucks doing things on a MacBook felt in some way alternative <laughs> rather yeah. than the most evil thing imaginable. Yeah. Well, that subversion for you it can often really backfire. Yeah. I'm just going to go and sit in a greasy spoon now and draw things. <gasps> Not the yeah, greasy crayons. spoon. crayons. Bring back crayons. The, the evil greasy spoons. Do you think they're paying their tax? <laughs> Oh, no. How can you take away that last remaining pleasure from us? Hey, we've got a cash business. All right. Hand it over. Next story, please. Old dry for NY. What happened in NY, Helen? Oh, um, Teddy. Sorry, Teddy. Uh, well, there, there was going to be a potentially historic blizzard, yep. which is one of those phrases. I mean, if you said to someone, name me your top five historic blizzards, <laughs> I think we'd struggle, to be honest, but apparently there's going to be a potentially historic blizzard, and in fact there was a blizzard. Uh, and what they'd already done was they banned driving in New York, so I don't know, if you lived at the top of a hill and you put your car on a sledge, I think it was all right, but you couldn't drive in New York and, it was, and they closed the, the subway, um, so they were taking it extremely seriously, uh-huh. and in the end it was, uh, it was a bit snowy. Uh, and, and that happened. Right. Um, uh, but then also in the state of Massachusetts, though, they um, it's a more sort of serious situation there. Uh, they've closed down the, the nuclear power station. Thousands of people still don't have power. Uh-huh. Uh, braced for high tides and flooding. But as far as the snow went, uh, the governor, Charlie Baker, he said that the snow had been fluffier and lighter than anticipated. So good news, if you work for ScotRail, you've now got the transferable skills to become a US governor. So, you know, Charlie Baker is a funny open. man, I have to say. I've, I've seen him at the comedy store when he's not being governor <laughs> of Massachusetts. But on my brief, it said, and, and thank you for correcting this, it said it was an unclear power station, not a nuclear power station. I just thought that'd be fantastic. <laughs> What's that big building over there? It's a power station. <laughs> How does it work? Not sure. But... Am I the only one that can see what was going on here? For an economy to grow, you need the population to grow. Am I right? Oh, what, so you think shut people in <laughs> for a few days? In. Every time there has been a blackout um, due to storms in the eastern seaboard, there has been a population boom nine months later. <laughs> you think we're being manipulated like pandas? We are indeed. <laughs> well, let's meet back here in nine months and see if your prediction came true, <laughs> Manipulated Fred. like fertile pandas. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly that's that's my taking it. I suspect I'm wrong, but you never know. <laughs> Helen, um, do you know anybody in New York that was had to have their hatches battened down? Yeah, well, they they did some battening and then went out and took a lot of photos of ordinary snowfall. But I guess if this thing is likely to come and it happens and you didn't prepare for it, then you're going to look worse than if you did prepare and everyone got off lightly, right? Yeah. Yep. But then next time they'll say, careful of the hor- historic blizzard, and everyone will go, yeah, right, I'm going out in a T-shirt, right. and then die. And the wee boy cried wolf. Yeah. Still to come, the last two headlines of the week, we've got Teddy and Helen Zaltzman with us. And here's the fourth story for Helen Zaltzman. Bish bash, she's been taking a mass. Who's been <laughs> taking a mass? Um, well, the Right Reverend Libby Lane, who Yay! has just been uh, consecrated as the first female bishop by the Church of England. She's now the Bishop of Stockport. And uh, and even though the rest of the church has had uh, a little while to get used to the idea of having female bishops, uh-huh. uh, there was still someone heckling during her consecration. Now, who was that? The Reverend Paul Williamson. He shouted, not in the Bible! Uh, and you think, 
Well, lots of things aren't in the Bible. Yeah, Probably the vehicle that he took to get that. there, the shoes that he's wearing, uh-huh. his underpants, um, <laughs> churches. Oh, yeah, the, the Church beards. of England. Beards are forbidden in the Bible, actually. <laughs> In Leviticus, so you know you can't you can't Not specific necess- enough. I th- yeah, I think he needs to update uh, where he's getting his information from uh-huh. because it's not compatible with modern life. Thanks. And I, I just think in in generations uh-huh. to come, they may look back at the, uh, Paul Williamson and think backing the wrong horse there. Now, uh, Teddy, I hear you itching to come in on this about the Church of England, but uh, I, I didn't know she'd been made Bishop of Stockport. Um, you can just kind of see, right, OK, we're going to give a, a very <laughs> first female bishop. Where have we got? Lincoln? No, Salisbury? That'd be nice. York? No, Stockport! It's got its own hat museum. She's bound to like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love a hat. We I've got to say, the, the garb... The clothing, when you saw all the bishops together, my goodness, they love a bit of dressing up, do they not? It's fancy. Mm. It's one of the bonuses of being a bishop, though, surely, dressing like a really fancy sofa. (laughs) 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 With flock wallpaper. Now, Teddy, what have you to say on this? Yeah, well, I I mean, I think, obviously, anything religious, I start thinking about the Da Vinci Code and (laughs) try to to decode the messages, and obviously I've I've decoded it's not in the Bible. I've run out of arguments. Uh, (laughs) That (laughs) tends to be what it means. And it's like Helen said, there are things that aren't in the Bible, and... You know, if he tries looking up the phrase "the Church of England," he will yep. find that it's not in the Bible. England so, itself. <laughs> all of these. He really needs to think about the way he's been living his life. He uses a biblical toilet. <laughs> Go on. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was of course the very. We congratulate her on her appointment, the Right Reverend Livy Lane, from Stockport. And then they all threw their hats in the air like a, <laughs> like a graduation. <laughs> That's all we've got time for this week. Another Scotland's Funny Bits will appear like magic next Friday at 6pm. But until then, it's bye for now.